In this video, I'm going to go through how to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I'm going to be focused on the mathematical process, though I am starting from the point of writing it in our quantum mechanics notation. The idea is going to be that you have some sort of operator or matrix you know about, and you know what elements it's, it has. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to leave these as variables, but these would be known. They would be ones or zeros or i's, something like that. The idea is that you don't know what your eigenvector is, some state. This is a spin one-half system for now, so it has two elements which are unknown, and the eigenvalue itself. Now we're going to actually be using this notation where we label the eigenvector with the eigenvalue. And you, there's this idea that we're going to have more than one eigenvalue, and each eigenvalue has a corresponding eigenvector. So because this is a two by two matrix, you expect it to have two eigenvalues. So how can we approach this? So let's say you don't know anything about linear algebra already, but I've told you this much. And you're like, okay, I think I can solve this through algebra. Let's go ahead and just do out the matrix math and multiply my operator, or written in uh, matrix form here, by my unknown state, a, B, and then I'm going to say that's going to be some scalar coefficient lambda, which we're also trying to find, times A, B. Now, one option is you can actually, like, kind of move this over to the left. There's different ways you can write this. And briefly, what this is going to be, if I then focus on what's happening on the left, is that S11 times A plus S12B equals lambda A. Right? On my bottom row, I'm going to have S21A plus S22B equals lambda B. And what I've done here is I've actually just multiplied this across. You could imagine this is a vector and this is a vector, but I've just broken them into two equations. Great. Now, S11, all of these S values are known. We have a problem, though. Notice that we have three unknowns, a, b, and lambda. I have two equations here. What that means is you don't have enough information to solve this. So if this is how you started, you would hopefully go here and say, crap, I need a third equation. So that third equation is called, it has some different names, the secular equation or the, um, the characteristic equation. And how this is going to work is that you have the determinant, and I'm not going to prove where this is going to come from, this isn't a math class, so I'm saying here's the tool to use, is that you want to take the determinant, this is why we were talking about determinants earlier, of your operator S minus the uh, eigenvalue you're looking for times your characteristic equation, um, sorry, your uh, identity matrix. And, and that looks kind of complicated. Let me write that in a different way. We're going to be looking for the determinant of, and again, S12, I'm going to write this as kind of nested, uh, sorry, nested parentheses. So we have S11, S12, S21, S22. But now what is this object? This is a scalar. Lambda is just some scalar we're looking for. And this is ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So in this case, it's a two by two, so that would be lambda, zero, zero, lambda. This actually gives us our third equation. I didn't tell you what the right side was equal to, zero. So we have to find the determinant of this thing and set that equal to zero. The best way to write that, in my opinion, is to actually pull this together. So this is the first equation, this is the second equation, and the third equation, and I won't write it all the way out, but the determinant of S11 minus lambda, and then S12, minus zero, so we don't need to put that. S21 minus zero, again, we don't put it, so S22 minus lambda. And we're gonna say that that is equal to zero. So that's our third equation. So when you go to do the determinant, remember that you're doing down minus up. This is actually going to give us a quadratic because you're going to have this term multiplied by that term. So when you go to solve, you will actually get 
two values for lambda from this. So if it was a three by three, you would get three values from lambda from it. So from this, you can figure out what lambda is because a and b does not appear. This determinant, this characteristic equation is going to give you your lambda values. And from that, you can then come back up and solve for a and b. So finding your eigenvalues and eigenvectors, again, when we start, it will be with fairly simple uh, matrices just as practice, but eventually this will be one, one step of a multiple step uh, calculation. So actually start here, find your two lambdas, or whatever the dimensionality of your operator is, and then go back up and solve. And remember that in this case you're actually going to have lambda 1 and lambda 1 state, lambda 2, and then your lambda 2 state. So you're actually going to repeat this twice for two different values of lambda, if it's a 2 by 2. So um, there will eventually be some examples of this, but this is a process that is important to get used to, especially if you haven't had linear algebra before, never felt comfortable doing this.